you like me to look into the camera? Oh, if you want to. Oh, you don't have to. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, that feels weird. <laughs> I'm just going to talk to you. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm Misha. I am 28 years old. Yeah, 28. Um, Singaporean born. Uh, grew up a little bit here and there, like Malaysia, but eventually came back here in 2009 and been here ever since. When I first knew you, you were still. Uh, what were you still? Uh, man, I'm trying to find words. This is my first. What did you identify as? Yes, what did you I, identify when we as when met? First met? <laughs> I am so uh, good at this. <laughs> so yeah, I can help. Uh, I don't know. I I I I think I was non-binary already, but okay. I I was just non-binary. I didn't know anything beyond that. I didn't see it. Even if I did the research, I didn't I didn't like see things online and be like, huh, oh, you know, I identify with that. I didn't. I always thought my thing was different. Yes. So I had a uh, body dysmorphia for a long time. So when I looked at my reflection or I looked picture pictures of myself, even from like very young age, uh, I hated it and I didn't like it. And I felt like a strong disconnect and it just looked wrong to me. Right. It even scared me uh, when I was young, whenever people tried to take pictures of me and run away. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And when they did successfully have like photos of me, I like try and tear it up. Right. I didn't. There was. There's lots of gender dysphoria, but I didn't realize what it was until much, you know, much, much later. Leading towards the normalization of homosexuality in our society, from changes to sexuality education in schools to more liberal media portrayals, and eventually the legalization of same-sex marriage. Third, many, especially those from the younger age groups, are concerned that as the societal narrative shifts they will find it harder to freely express their own beliefs without being labelled as homophobic. They worry about getting cancelled or suffering discrimination in school or at the workplace because of their beliefs. I accept the importance that many Singaporeans place on their elected MPs' positions on these bills, to the extent that it would be a factor in their decisions at the polls. However, I hope Singaporeans will consider the broader issues at hand. There are too many important issues that affect the lives of Singaporeans for one's vote to be decided based on this single issue. This has been one of the most difficult speeches to prepare. I was worried I might come across as prejudiced against members of the LGBT community. Hand on heart, I'm not. LGBT persons are, are, are human beings worthy of the same amount of love and respect that we accord to any other person. Disagreeing with LGBT positions is not an attack on LGBT persons. In fact, I hope that my speech will open up a platform for more difficult but respectful conversations on this issue. However, we must recognize that LGBT issues are sensitive issues, just like race and religion. People who subscribe to one faith do not force their beliefs on others. Religious beliefs are also not taught as facts in our school curriculum that students are expected to accept without question. Similarly, we should treat LGBT issues as sensitive topics, just like religion. We should not force people to accept one view or another, with the risk of being labelled as bigoted or immoral. Mr Deputy Speaker, I will vote against the Penal Code Amendment Bill and vote for the Constitutional Amendment Bill. Okay. Do you have to look like your dead self in your eyes? Is that a legal thing? No. No? No, but no. like, you know, people will be confused. Yes. And they don't... Not, like, I think usually humans don't like to be confused. And so the moment that they're confused, they won't go for that option because it doesn't feel as safe for them as someone who matches what they look like on their IC. And then beyond that, like, you know, even if I pass, especially during the glorious COVID times, don't get me wrong, you know, COVID is terrible and I'm very sad and depressed about yes. COVID like any human being would be. Yes. But uh, during the pandemic era, um, the masks were commonplace and, you know, I'll still wear them forever, not only for health reasons, but also for like gender reasons. Yes. So like, I think a lot of um, trans women like to wear masks in Singapore because they pass way, way, way better <laughs> with a mask on. Is, is that true? Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, because like a lot of masculine features for a lot of trans women are like, you know. Oh, the jawline. The jawline. The the things the mouth, that you can't like, change from you know, the bones. Mustache, right. like the shadow, whatever. Right, right. You know, if I speak, people like it doesn't matter where the hell I am. It could be a bus stop or a line in a shop or something, um, or at work. You know, like people will like immediately be like, you know, what the fuck? You know, it's like woman sounds like a man. You know, it's just like a. A clash for them. And well, would you say that the the discomfort people get when they misidentify, uh, when, like when they get confused by a voice, would that be a similar discomfort to your feeling of gender dysmorphia? Nope, absolutely nope. not comparable at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it, I mean it's a, it's a fine question. Uh, yeah. So, because I'm trying to, I I found it very hard to get people who have never thought about this thing to even start thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the problem, right? You yes. have to get people curious so that they can actually learn. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, so I guess trying to explain gender dysphoria... By the way, gender dysphoria and body dysmorphia, yeah. two different things. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, so body dysmorphia, like, doesn't have to be gender-related at all. But uh, body dysmorphia is, is, like, more related to a kind of like a visceral like negative feeling from like perceiving your own body like it could be like like some body part it could be your entire body it could be like a shape of things like some like some people have it with like something as trivial as like an elbow they might see their elbow and just be like almost like disgusted right. by it I, I, ca- I can't imagine like um, the idea of being born away and just like not feeling like your body is your own yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's a bit mind blowing yeah. no it sorry. is it is weird yes. um if you've ever watched a david lynch movie yeah uh i would think that it's kind of like that like have that feeling of like this is like a fever dream you know this is just like upsetting and like surreal in a disgusting way <laughs> like like i think somehow uh, it's it's like that for, for a lot of people right yeah. dr tanya song mr speaker i speak to you now as a doctor and as a mother of boys in my time tomboyish girls and effeminate boys were given mocking and even derogatory names for those of us who are lucky to never be confused as to whether you like a boy or girl it was already not easy for those who felt an attraction to someone of the same gender, I can only imagine the fear and anxiety. Fear that there's something wrong with you, that your parents will disown you, that your friends will call you a freak. For those people facing conflicts and stress, there must be safe havens for them to seek fair and balanced counselling without undue influence. In the school, I urge the Ministry of Education to review the sex education component to ensure that it is based on science and facts, while controversial opinions and trends are clearly stated as such. To fellow parents, if you, like me, grew up without any knowledge of LGBT terms, let us educate ourselves. What is hetero, homo, pan, or asexual? What is trans or cisgender? What is a sexual orientation versus gender identity? Only then are we equipped to guide our children as they grow and explore. Is there a right way and a wrong way to ask questions? Probably, uh, I wouldn't know. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I'm someone who who, who kind of just asks questions. Uh, I'm, right, pre- I'm uh, pretty bad. On, on a scale socially. of one to, one to ten, how, how bad have I been doing in asking questions today? Like, I ten, don't know. Ten being good and... One being like dog like shit. a six or seven. Six or seven, yeah. I mean, I don't expect much. Right. You know, like, you're a Singaporean. Yeah, but and at the same time, like, I'm a Singaporean who, ha- who has been exposed to the community to some extent. To some extent. Yeah. Uh, but you... So, like, if, like, if I'm a six or seven, then... But you're not in, in as you yeah. stated, you're not in, in queer circles in real life, and that actually really changes things. Yes. Right? As, as, as someone who grew up online and has spent, like gazillions of hours online both socializing and, and like playing games and all that stuff socializing online i will and say yes online. i will say that you, you miss a lot 
right. if not if you're not socializing in real life, and that applies even more if you're if you're trying to learn about like minorities or just like any group that isn't the majority, right? right? Because you they interact in a in a very different way from like cis het society. When I was younger, I was a part of the precursor to what we would know today as the incel community. And, you know, single, fat, ugly guy. Prime target for that kind of craziness. And if you've never heard of incel, congratulations. You've had a blessed life. And a part of that community's messaging included transphobic and homophobic messaging. I was only in it for about a year, but it took me five years to wash off that stench from my body. It's not really something I like talking about. I spent like the next decade learning about cult and extremism and all that nonsense to prevent myself and other people from falling into it. I guess I was trying to make up for some of the terrible things I believed in during that time. If you went back like through the internet and you know what you're looking for, you can find some Really horrible things I said. It, it it's hard for 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 someone who says like me who also wants to you know be an ally to be supportive. It's hard to find a like where am I allowed in? You know. Um, yeah. 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 I, I can for, for you guys, it's like a, a it's like a safe space. It's for you guys to feel comfortable. Yeah. 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 So. So, yeah. inviting someone like me in might also be dangerous because you don't know if I am a. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it makes sense uh, that there are so many of these groups that essentially don't allow cis people in. Yes. Uh, it it does become a problem. Yes, because because then it's know, like I, allies, then I, yeah, I don't know how to help. Allies can't can't learn more. Yes. And you know they can't like integrate. But I you know obviously you can't play them right. Like yeah. it's 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 a it's a bit it's a bit of an issue. It's, um, there are lots of there cases, are safety. Yeah, there's safety. Yeah, there are lots of cases where like someone might get doxxed you know, like their real life might get totally doxxed because, you know, like us, like a cishet person was in a group and, you know, they claim yeah. to be an ally, but then yes. it turns out that they're an asshole. Yes. It happens. Parliament last debated whether or not to repeal Section 377A in 2007. MPs expressed strong views on both sides. I joined in the debate to advise restraint and caution. I acknowledge that what consenting adults do in private is their personal affair, and the government should not intervene. But I pointed out that not everyone was equally accepting of homosexuality. Quite a few had considerable reservations, particularly within certain religious groups, including the Muslims, the Catholics, and many Protestant denominations. And I didn't go into the community intending on hating anyone. I was just afraid of losing something of myself. You, know, you, you have to understand that bigotry of that kind, of almost any kind, comes from fear. Fear of losing power, fear of losing the way you live, fear of losing right, privilege, all that nonsense. And it is, you know, nonsense. Now, 15 years later, attitudes have shifted appreciably. While we remain a broadly conservative society, gay people are now better accepted in Singapore. Prime Minister spoke and stated the government's position. He said that Singaporeans as a whole remained largely conservative. Majority wanted to keep Singapore a conservative society with heterosexual, stable families.
giving trans people equal rights, letting gay people marry. You, people like me, straight cis guy, we don't actually lose anything. We're like bringing people up to you, but you're not actually cutting yourself down. You're just bringing them up to your level. The only thing that you end up losing then is that gap. This gap between you and them. That gap lets you look down on them, marginalize them, look, just stomp down. That's the only thing you lose. Even so, I also cannot believe, ignore how many in our Asian society continue to equate marriage and partnership to one between a man and a woman. This view is held not only by those who are religious, by which I mean not just groups that have been more vocal about traditional marriage, such as evangelical Christians and Muslims, but based on my conversations with residents in Sengkang and beyond, also those who do not strongly profess any faith. For these Singaporeans, the fact that marriage must involve a union between a man and a woman goes beyond a legally binding contractual relationship. It is a fundamental belief, a worldview. This sense is so deeply ingrained that they are not only unable to accept the principle of same-sex marriage, for them, were such marriages to become recognized, they, perhaps paradoxically, would feel that society is no longer representative of who they are. It's not like letting gay people marry means you can't marry. It's not like saying trans people are men or trans people are women stops you from being a man or a woman yourself. You just lose your gap. When you're trying to go against things that give people equality or fairness through things like repealing 377A or uh, legalizing gay marriage, you will start saying things like They worry about getting cancelled or suffering discrimination in school or at the workplace because of their beliefs. Or It's dangerous for our society if we do not learn to respect others who hold differing views from us. Or even things like For me, Marriage is a sacred bond between man and woman, committing fidelity to each other so long as they both shall live. But all those are nonsense. It's hypocritical because the things you are worried of happening to your group, it's already happening to the group that you're trying to marginalize. It's there every day. You're okay with it happening to them. You're okay with dealing out the hurt, using the excuse that you're protecting a group from an imaginary hurt that might not even happen. You're okay with keeping the status quo with the excuse that it, it's to protect other people from imaginary threats. And to moralize that, you know, hatred, you need to dress it up. If you're an incel, it's women are too shallow to like men like me. But if you're a homophobe, it's fear of losing family value or some nonsense like that. I, I think there's more people in Singapore that's an ally than not. Um, <laughs> I want to say... I, I would hope... Yeah, I would like, hope so. I, yeah. I want to I say that it's very generational. You should try my recommendation. Yeah. You know, if, and this is to anyone out there who, who spends a lot of time online. Um, do try your best to put yourself out there and join like discord groups like because you can especially if they're if they're fine with it like you can hop onto a voice channel when you see people there a voice chat people are talking you just listen in you know if they're if they're fine with you listening in and then you you sort of get a, a feel for how they interact and then you can start talking when you, when you don't when you're not so shy right. i think that if you if you just join voice chats you, you hear people speak and and you get kind of used to it. Uh, eventually, like socializing via voice, it's a lot. It's a lot better than text. You get expression and all that. Um, after a while, you can you can ask them the kinds of questions you asked me today. Like like not all of them, but like definitely things like how do I ask? Right. How do I approach this kind of this kind of thing? Like I want to know, but it's hard to know because these are like social questions, right? You can't like go on Wikipedia and learn how to talk to a queer person. Like, it's not... Yeah, and that's not... That's probably like a terrible WikiHow guy. Yeah. But, um... With some weird <laughs> pictures that doesn't associate classic, with anything. Classic WikiHow art. I thought I was doing this documentary to 
showcase the LGBTQ community of Singapore. I thought I was just, you know, gonna make a nice little happy thing. <sighs> but after the interview with Misha, I think I figured out that what I really wanted to tell was the story of bigotry. By the definition of transphobia and homophobia, then yes, I was a transphobe and homophobe. In fact, like depending on how you define the words, I still am. Because even until today, I have an unnatural discomfort around trans women and gay men. You can see me acting really weird during my interview with Misha and I cannot explain it. And it's weird because I don't have that same reaction with say uh, trans men and, tr and, and lesbians and uh, ace people and gender fluid people. It's really just trans women and gay men and I wonder how much of that is uh, upbringing. I was raised with words like aqua and gay, which are pejorative as insults in the context they were used. It's an interesting thing to think about, like how much of our prejudices are born from childhood education. And it made me really want to talk to someone who wasn't raised that way. Hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, your father told me that you made a very interesting piece of art. Do you mind telling us what it is? Um, my full name is Tommy Nana, but it's very hard for a lot of people to say. So, Tommy. So, in fifth grade, we had exhibition and we got to choose a subject and I chose homophobia. For that, we had to make an artwork. Well, I did a little bit of research and I found out that I think it was like 200 LGBTQ teens every year have suicide, like try suicide. So I made a painting which was a gray background with a bunch of words that they might think might be thinking like, does my parents not love me? Would my siblings not love me? Am I making the wrong choice? And I put 200 different colored lotus flowers on it out of origami paper. So I had some reds, some oranges, some yellows, some greens, some blues, some purples, and I put them in a rainbow and it was, yeah. What do you think of the LGBTQ community case? I think it's very broad and people should be allowed to be whatever they want to, do whatever they want to, except for if it's like murdering and killing. <laughs> um, I think we shouldn't see any diff, like we shouldn't look at a person any differently if they tell us that they're gay or that they're trans or that they non-binary. We should just see, oh, okay, cool. Thank you for trusting me. Do you think that um, us adults are really stupid for not just letting them be who they are. Sometimes. <laughs> was there was there a problem? Or was there issues coming up for you, or with your family at least? I was on a on a campaign, on a very very long term mission, uh, to to make it sound as bad as possible to manipulate my mom, uh, into becoming more open minded. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I started uh, when I was thirteen. Or fourteen, and uh, I guess I stopped a few years ago, like three or four years ago, uh, pretty much because I reached my goals. <laughs> so now she thinks for herself more often. Um, when she hears news, she doesn't just like subscribe to it. She, there's a chance that when people tell her things that sound weird, she will stop. She and... will actually Google it. Right. Which is, like, very impressive. You know, she's like. 70 or something. It's easier to be cis yes. and it's easier to be queer in the, the younger generation. Um, that's because they're less constrained by you know, their, their parents upbringing and all that stuff. And, and you know, like with our parents' generation, right, like the difference is massive culturally. Yeah. If there's anything you can say to the 
people who are homophobes and transphobes right now, what um, would you want to say to them? Look at just because they're different and maybe a little special or they might look or act different doesn't necessarily mean that they're not human. They're just as human as you and get to know them a little bit. Um, go to them with a little bit of an open mind, try to know them, try to understand a little bit. And once you try doing that, that's all I can ask from you. Do you have anything you want to say to uh, people of the LGBT community? No matter what anyone else thinks, you shouldn't care because all you should care about is how you feel and if you are happy with how you are. If you're happy with your sexuality, if you're happy with your hair, your clothes, whatever, don't change it. Stay like that. Even if someone says, oh, you're weird, stay like that. Unless the clothes is like you haven't showered and... Then maybe shower. <laughs> This was where the video was originally supposed to end, but I'm still here standing in front of my wall of sadness, so you know that's not happening. This video was not originally supposed to include me. It started with me wanting to showcase the lives of the LGBTQ community in Singapore. There were three other entities that I reached out to to participate in this video, but they all declined in the end. They were worried to show their support of LGBTQ issues in public. My goal with this video and my previous documentary is to feature regular people living everyday lives with these issues. These people I interviewed, they are not businessmen or politicians. Sometimes I get lucky enough and I maybe get an expert, but they don't have profit margins or political agendas. They're just people you see on the street or online, like you. Like me and they're afraid they are afraid that being public about the support of lgbtq issues will lose them financial aid from the government they are afraid that revealing who they are will jeopardize their careers their livelihood that they might be fired targeted that they might not be allowed to go to school that they might end up on the streets kicked out of homes even if all those things aren't actually true it doesn't matter because to people living their lives right now it feels like they are i could have reached out to other entities to pet out the timeline in this video like pink dot i'm sure they would have been more than happy to participate but i think the lack of people on screen speaks better for itself also i was a little lazy There are no laws against the expression of support of LGBTQ people in Singapore, but that doesn't matter because it feels like there are. Legally, there can't be repercussion for taking a public stance on this topic, but that doesn't matter because it feels like there will be. This is what it means to feel unsafe to come out of the closet. Just because it's legal to do so doesn't mean it's safe. Even if you're Gerald Kiam saying hand on heart, I'm not a bigot. It doesn't matter. Because what you say and the ideas you're promoting aren't matching up. So it just feels like a lie. But do you know what's not a lie? That there are people being hurt by our intolerant decisions. This video wasn't supposed to include me. And one day, hopefully, it won't have to. One day, Misha's experience will be all that is needed. One day, Tami's optimism will be the perfect ending. One day, everyone will feel safe to talk about their lives. One day, you won't have to show someone like me, a former bigot comfortable in his own skin, just to get a point across. One day, love will win. You gotta focus on yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. Gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that Don't let somebody take your time and your worth, just focus on yourself, but